Hello and welcome to the video. This is a follow-up video on this model here. This is the ZOHD Alpha Strike. This is the one that I got and that I've been flying for the last couple of weeks and I thought I'd do a follow-up video to the video that I did a little while ago. That was the initial unboxing, first look and also the maiden flight. Now the maiden flight didn't go according to plan. I put iNav on this so it's got an iNav flight control at the back and that was more so that I could actually get the GPS speed so we could see how fast it actually flew. However, the iNav stuff didn't work perfectly in that maiden. It's very rare that that happens to me but occasionally it does and I wanted to show that was actually the real experience. I didn't want to go and like, edit the video and pretend that iNav worked perfectly because it didn't. I had servo continuously trimmed the servos turned on. I had all the switches set to how I normally have them set, uh, but I now was just having a bit of a weird day. So quite a few of you commented on that original video saying, well, hang on a minute, if the maiden was like that and you didn't get to do everything you wanted to do, because uh, I wanted to fly in lots of manual mode and in that maiden video, uh, the servos wouldn't trim up and let me do it. You know, how can you comment about what it's like to fly? Well, that's assuming that the only flight I've done is the one that you would just seen in that original video where I've done the Maiden. And of course, I've done quite a bit more since then, so I was actually talking about that current experience. So thank you to everyone that kind of asked that question. But trust me, if I'm going to venture an opinion, it's going to be based on the fact that I've actually flown the thing enough. So in this video, what I'm going to do is go through the settings for both manual and for iNav as well. Um, after playing with it a little bit more and getting it all set up, it's working great. Now you can see here, there is a chunk of up elevator. We'll come to that in a minute. That's where it needs to be to fly straight and level at 50% throttle, which is gonna give you the best part of 70 miles an hour. So uh, a little bit more than the manual, but there's a ton of iNav uh, goodness in here that I've tweaked and changed as well. Things like the board offset so that you've got the right nose up attitude, things like the, um, the rate, the expo, that kind of goodness. Also the PIDs, because uh, I've also also tuned this now, I'll share that all too. Uh, dump and well actually I'll put a diff all that's probably going to be a better way to do it I'll put a link to the diff all down below if you want to set your model up in the same way uh, just caveat 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 obviously your servos might not center at exactly the same position and it's probably worthwhile once you've got your servos set to those right offsets just making sure that the servo travel is in the middle position so you get the right amount of throw so there are some model setup basics that you absolutely need to stick with. Uh, the CG marks are under the wing, but in my experience flying here, those are nice and conservative and give you a nice stable flight for pitch. However, you can go back a little bit if you are a more experienced pilot to give you a little bit more twitchiness in the pitch. Uh, the throws that I'm using are 11 millimeter throws. So that's 11 millimeters in one direction and then the other. Uh, they are pretty close to the maximum that's in the manual. It gives insane roll rate, you'll see that in a minute. An awful lot of fun and uh, incredible to fly. I would probably uh, dial the aileron back a little bit to kind of more like eight millimeters if you don't want those same uh, insane roll rates. In terms of the offsets, uh, for the control surfaces. It says three millimeters up in the manual. That is nowhere near enough in my humble opinion. This one needs to be eight millimeters up. This one needs to be about seven millimeters up. So, you know, don't, don't be shy of giving yourself a big chunk of up elevator to uh, keep the, uh, the nose up and keep it flying straight and level. Also, the other big thing as well is add a chunk of expo. It talks about this in the manual. You're going to need kind of 35, 40% expo, more than you think you need, uh, because with those um, kind of 11, 12 millimeter throws, uh, you are going to get some really nice handling, particularly in the roll. So having the expo on both controls is just going to make it a little bit easier to handle. I've set that up in iNav rather on my radio because I've got iNav in here. So speaking of iNav, let me jump on the computer and let me show you how that is all working. I'll run through how everything is set. Again, I'll put a diff all in the link below. So let me just take the cover off the back and plug the cable in. OK. 
Okay, wait for the flight control to finish booting. Let's click on connect and show you how I've got it set up. So the no uh, main power, so the GPS is going to go red in a moment. Uh, mixer, this is how the mixer is set up, standard stuff. Nothing particularly exciting in here. I haven't reduced the weight of anything uh, for the control surfaces. The control surfaces by default have kind of maximum deflection that it talks about in the manual. In terms of the outputs though, I have offset the middle channel positions hugely to give me that seven and eight millimeter uh, up of the elevons at the back. So my servo three is at 1621 and servo four is at 1374. Uh, it's probably worth when they are that far away from 1500 actually physically resetting the servos and the linkages so that they are back to more of a 90 degree position. I might do that in future. At the moment, it's flying really nicely. All I need to do is just kind of reset these to 1500 and then manually adjust the linkages to kind of get uh, get the up elevator that this thing needs. Nothing really exciting in here, but we do need to talk about the fixed wing level pitch trim. Uh, this is the up angle that's needed to fly straight and level. This is where mine has got to. So mine is set for seven and a half. I originally had it set for eight. Uh, I think you could probably go down to about seven, depends on how your model is flying, but I would set your fixed wing level pitch trim to about between 7.0 and 7.5 for straight and level flight. Everything else in here is pretty standard stuff. A couple of things I have done, a couple of things that I like to keep set up. I like to permanently enable air mode for fixed wing. I like to permanently enable launch mode. See my video on launch mode for how I have that set up. We'll look at that in a moment. And I also like to continuously trim servos on fixed wing. That was actually something that I asked for. It's something that's been around for a long time in Ardu plane, and it's now here in iNav and it's great. You just fly straight and level and it'll kind of figure out the trimmed servo positions. Fail safe in mind is always set to return to home. Right, let me just finish talking about the launch stuff. Now again, all of these things are covered in my launch video. The only thing that I did do, I increased the launch angle. Where are you? There you are. Uh, I, By default it's 18. Um, I found that was okay, but I wanted a nice strong launch for this model to make sure that if it's a bit of a dodgy uh, throw, it can absolutely get into the air. So I increased it to 25. You can get away with kind of 22, 23, but 18 for this seems a little bit low. Now, the other thing that's worth talking about here is the tune and the rates that were calculated. Now I have done quite a few flights and done an auto tune on here. So let me show you what the auto tune came up with. So here is the PID tab. So we can see that for the roll, uh, very little P, little bit of I, and very little feed forward. The roll axis on this is very, very responsive and incredible fun to fly. The pitch axis is more like what you'd expect uh, with P of 13, I of 28, and a feed forward of 131. Again, you could change things around in here where you know you had more travel for the elevator, or as I said in the beginning, the CG marks are uh, quite conservative. You can push them back just a little bit and increase the sensitivity uh, and the responsiveness of pitch. So when we look at the rates, it gets really funny. So this thing rolls at 570 degrees per second. So almost two rolls per second, which is fab, amazing fun. And the pitch rate is only about 110 degrees per second. So whereas for the roll rate, it'll take you half a second to do one complete roll. To do a similar move with the pitch, it's probably going to take you the best part of uh, three, three and a half seconds to do that. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking at iNav. If you follow those tips and tricks, you should have a, a faster experience to get it all dialed in. Again, incredible roll rates from this and it is brilliant to fly. So my 
review or summary of the uh, of the model at the end of that original Maiden video actually still stands. It is fast, it is loud, it is fun, you get crazy roll rates, but you don't get a shed load of time in the sky, even with a reasonable sized battery, it just eats the battery. But you know what, like one of my friends says, it's half the time, but twice the fun. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have looked at the model. Uh, this is really fun to fly in manual mode, but also kind of fun to fly with the iNav st stuff turned on so that you have things like a speed readout, which is kind of fun to see how quickly you're going. Um, again, I think this is personally more of an FPV ship, only because although it looks fantastic flying in the sky, it gets small incredibly quickly. Uh, so edge of line of sight with FPV, you're fine, uh, but because of the speed, it becomes a dot in a handful of seconds. Links again below to all that stuff, including the diffle if you're an INAV pilot. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.